Well, closing gong there live from the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange and the uh, most influential people of uh, African descent were given the opportunity to close the market this Friday. It's on that note that I welcome you to Business Nigeria. I am Tolu Lokwe Ogunjobi. Well, a warm welcome to you again. Telcom's giant MTN Nigeria has rejected the allegation that it repatriated $8.1 billion illegally. The telecom insisted that all the dividends it paid its shareholders between 2007 and 2015 were approved by the Apex Bank. The company was reacting to the claim of the Apex Bank that it illegally converted shareholders' loans to preference shares and repatriated $8.1 billion as dividends during the period under scrutiny. While the Pension Transna Transitional Arrangement Directorate, that's PITAD, held its second interactive stakeholders forum for pensioners from the southwest zone under the defined benefit scheme in Lagos, the event gave the opportunity for speakers and stakeholders to discourse and profile solutions to issues affecting pension administration in the country. Details in this report. The Directorate is a ministerial department funded by the Federal Ministry of Finance. It's responsible for the management of pensions under the rolled pension scheme for pensioners who did not transit to the new contributory pension scheme. This gathering is aimed at tightening loose ends as it affects payments of pension and intimating the pensioners on innovations and quality services rendered by the Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate. Without all the sister agencies, the stakeholders and pension administration working together, we cannot achieve any success in pension administration. So we have a close collaboration both with the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, our supervising ministry, which is the Ministry of Finance, the CBN, where we maintain our treasury single accounts, and also with PENCOM who is the regulator of the industry. So there is a large uh, extent of uh, collaboration amongst us. We continue collaborating with all the agencies. The, the, the committee is uh, overseeing so that at least areas of collaboration and areas of improvement will be put in place to better the life and flight of our pensioners. We we'll continue to appeal to the executive arm of government to make sure that adequate funding is given to the agencies responsible for payment of pensioners. Chief Commissioner of Public Rights Commission agrees that there has been reduction in various types of complaints from pensioners, ranging from delay and non-payment of pensions and gratuities, especially against the public sector. We have uh, serious challenges of, uh, of funding because it's a very mobile agency. We have, you know, hundreds of investigators who need to move out to the sites of the complaints because sometimes you can't treat the complaints sitting in the office. So they need to go and inspect the site. And also we have to arrange press, I mean, case conferences to sit down with the complainant and then the person against whom the complaint is made so that we can resolve those matters. We have timelines within which uh, you know, complaints that we met to respond and should respond to us. And we are you know, moving to make sure that we are very, very firm in applying sanctions to those who are intransigent. Pensioners that are sovereign most in this country are local government pensioners and teachers because of the 5% counterpart funding initiated by the federal government in 1987. We want that counterpart funding to be resuscitated. A lot of the thrusters are from the old defunct pension administration offices that collapsed when Peter took over. They still have the data, they are calling the pensioners. So we are being proactive by reaching out to our pensioners and asking them once they receive such calls, they should call us. We have our investigations on ground to go after those thrusters. The Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate was established in order to eliminate all the bottlenecks associated with the old pension system. 
Now, following the release of Nigeria's country-by-country country reporting regulations, the regulations in June 2018, the Federal Inland Revenue Service has issued complementary information as follows. Now, guidelines for CBC reporting in Nigeria, CBC reporting notification templates, guidelines on the appropriate use of information contained in the CBC BC report and inappropriate use of CBC reports and the likely consequence for the FRS. Now let's take a look at some of the guidelines. Well, by releasing the notification templates and information circulars, FRS is signaling its readiness to implement the CBC regulations effective from the 2018 financial year. The next step will be for FRS to put in place the necessary infrastructure required for automatic exchange of CBC reports with other tax authorities. Taxpayers, on the other hand, need to start taking steps to ensure effective compliance. Well, for detailed discussion on this and other issues surrounding this, transfer pricing, compliance, and all of that. Well, I have with me in the studio, though, let me go further, the senior manager, transfer pricing with PricewaterhouseCoopers Nigeria, Tiwa Utufale. Did I get that right? Yes, you Thank did. you very much for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, let, let me start this way because I know the focus will be more on transfer pricing. Correct. Now, what is transfer pricing? Tell us, what is it really all about? Well, transfer pricing, um, in effect, um, is really the way in which sort of related parties or connected parties price their transactions. Um, so what you would find is that in most tax jurisdictions, transfer pricing rules are being introduced. Why is that? One of the key focus areas of a lot of tax authorities um, is the fact that a lot of transactions or, or yeah, well, I would say transactions occur within multinational groups or groups of companies. So the pricing of those transactions impacts the profits within the group, which also consequently um, impacts tax. So a key focus area for tax authorities is, is ensuring that the pricing of the transactions is done appropriately and as would have existed between independent parties. So just to bring that point um, home a bit, um, the Nigerian tax authorities introduced transfer pricing regulations in 2012 um, and this is just to ensure that Nigeria doesn't have a negative impact from a tax perspective from the pricing of transactions. So for example, um, a company in Nigeria having transactions with its offshore counterparts in other jurisdictions. Um, and as we've been seeing, the, tax, uh, the government as well as the tax authorities um, are trying to sort of in, increase um, revenue and therefore uh, transfer pricing is a key focus area for them. Indeed, increasing revenue at this time when we try to diversify <laughs> away from oil. But why yes. is transfer price? why is it important at this time? So it's important now because um, I, I guess maybe just to give a background, um, now over the last sort of two decades, the way in which businesses conduct their transactions um, differs from what would have existed over 20 years ago. Um, however, the tax laws haven't really kept up with the evolution of business. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of digital business and things like that, but our tax laws still kind of follow the traditional way of doing business, which is having a sort of a fixed presence um, in a particular jurisdiction. As such, the OECD and G20 countries came together to try and identify sort of where the loopholes exist and plug those loopholes. That was something, um, it was a project called the Base Erosion and Profit Shifting Project. Now the recommendations that came out of um, sort of that project is what the Nigerian tax authorities have now used as, you know, some of the updates in its 2018 TP regulations, which was released this week. Oh, you, you, you talked about old rules uh, so that you, yes. you you know so so why why the new rules now so the new rules um have been released for a number of reasons um 
basically to give taxpayers sort of detailed guidance mm -hmm. around certain issues and certain transactions but like I said earlier also to kind of incorporate the recommendations from the OECD project uh, so the point is we need to keep up to date um, and Nigeria is trying to do that hmm. that is really 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 good so let's look at it critically now transfer pricing a lot what are the real key changes so there have been a number of um, changes, but I think I would like to put them in sort of three buckets. So um, there's changes around sort of previous definitions that existed in our 2012 regulations, um, but they are also providing more guidance around specific transactions. Then there's been sort of changes around the documentation requirement for taxpayers. But I think most notably what would be very important for taxpayers now is the introduction of um, pen a penalty regime which is significantly higher than what existed before. Mm -hmm. To touch on a few of the points I mentioned, so for example now there's guidance around where you have a related party uh, transaction that involves the use of intangibles. So intellectual property. Now, what the tax authorities want to ensure is that there's substance to that transaction. So if I'm making a payment for the use of a royalty, or oh, sorry, or, or a trade name, um, I, they want to ensure that there's some sort of substance to that transaction. Uh, they're also looking at even capping the amount that a Nigerian entity can pay to um, its offshore um, related party in respect of that transaction. That's kind of controversial. They're looking at 5% um, of earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization. We're expecting that there will be some sort of arguments and contentious um, issues around that, but we'll wait to see. Hmm. Now, now this penalty, I, I, I'd like you to, to expand shit more on, uh, on the penalty uh, regime. Tell us more about it. So in the past, um, based on the 2012 regulations, if you didn't file, for example, your transfer pricing returns, um, the penalties would follow what was in or what is in the Companies Income Tax Act, um, which is 25,000 naira for the first month and then 5,000 naira each month following. However, they've introduced um, hefty penalties now. So in the event where you don't file your TP returns, um, you are looking at a minimum of 10 million Naira um, for failure to file the return and 10,000 Naira for each day that the default um, continues. There are also very similar uh, sort of penalties for other types of what I would say defaults. So for example, if you do not prepare uh, or rather if you do not submit your transfer pricing documentation to the tax authorities when they request for it, mm -hmm. it's also 10 million naira. I think one, th one thing that's probably worth noting is the fact that the penalties could be as high as 1% of the value of the related party transaction. So if your transactions are quite significant, then you are looking at hefty penalties. Okay, now, now what do people need to do now talking about going forward and um, you know, uh, I think breaking it down, what do we do moving forward? So I, um, the, the first po uh, point would be for taxpayers who have been non-compliant to date to comply. So you would need mm -hmm. to ensure or, mm -hmm. or well, maybe, I wouldn't say maybe actually, I would say you would need to make transfer pricing a high priority on your list um, to ensure that there's no default. Mm -hmm. and, and in terms of going forward, it would be to sort of have a risk assessment uh, where you're looking at the current regulations and how they impact your business and being able to put things in place to ensure that you comply by the due due date. So all, all of this is still one way or the other aimed at expanding the tax net or what would you say it's really intent to achieve with this uh, transfer so pricing? So, I, I, well, I wouldn't say it's to expand the tax net. What I would say is it's to sort of increase um, sort of compliance? compliance as well as ensuring that the tax base in Nigeria is not eroded. There's always this um, sort of notion that multinational companies um, who work or who have businesses or or, or transactions in less developed um, countries seem to sort of shift profits to lower tax jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. However, you know, the introduction of transfer pricing rules is to minimize, um, uh, well, eradicate that. Well, indeed, very interesting. Well, I think I, I have signals from the Nigerian Stock Exchange now that, um, uh, is uh, ECOP ready? Let's, let's come back to you.
Can I, 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 I hand it over to him? So all three you will be talking to me. Hello, Ekop. Hello, Ekop. Okay, so so oh, yeah. Tiwa, well, let's as we, as we round up this yes. uh, part of the discussion, what 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 do we? You've, you've already said that that compliance is this part of the world. Many don't comply, maybe because they don't see what government in quotes because people believe that like i always give that example of a state like lagos you yeah. see what the government is doing you yeah. pay happily you comply do you agree that it's also government needs to do more in talking about making people enjoy you know well i think tax. i i think the point would be for government to sort of have some kind of framework where they're kind of showing where the revenues are going mm -hmm. um there could be a lot of misinformation misinfo um, going around about whether or not the tax revenues are being used appropriately. But putting in, putting in, in, in place a framework to show taxpayers that where their taxes are going would be useful. Indeed. Well, I want to thank you now, Tiwa, for sparing your time. Senior Manager with PWC, giving us up, bringing us up to speed with transfer pricing mechanism and everything that has to do with it on Business Nigeria today. Thank you very much thank for joining us on the show. Me. Well, I think I'm having feeders that I have to move straight to the stock exchange for today's trading proceedings at the stock exchange. And uh, if you don't get up, it's all yours. So, look, good afternoon. This afternoon, uh, uh, the market closed in the negative territory and of course we predicted that in the afternoon that it, there's no way that we will be positive at all the market was down 0.68 percent nearly getting to a percentage point you know the fundamentals guiding all of this but the issue that we are going to discuss this afternoon concerns most influential people of african descent the delegation was here at the stock exchange, and we have groups of them, you led by our Morayo Afolabi Brown, Deputy Director of TVC News Entertainment. Madam, welcome. Thank you for having us. For now, we are not so familiar with this, your group. <laughs> okay, we want to know more about it later. Okay, the ladies of your view were nominated. In fact, we're actually recipients of the most influential persons of African descent. And the ladies are here with us, and we're all here yeah. together. Come on, ring. The closing bell of the stack of scene today was so, such an honor to be here tell me how did you feel that you were part of the closing gong i mean you used to watch it on television now you found it well. it was exciting for all of us to participate there were quite a number of other recipients uh different from people from different walks of life so we were amongst the media categories and it was exciting to be amongst other people who were recipients of the same award and the ladies of you have been five years in this and uh, we thank thankful that we're quite influential enough to be recognized today for this award. Okay, let's go to this particular group, Mipad. This is for 2018. Yes. And for how long has this gone, I mean, the training to spot out global women? My, my part started last year. It wasn't just for global women. Last year, there were women from all, people from all, all walks of life, from Africa, that were, that were amongst those who won the 2017 My part. This year, we're amongst those for 2018, and it's going to continue up until 2024. Yeah. And it's a, it's a United Nations supported initiative where young Africans across Africa and within the diaspora are identified. We're doing great things, yeah. and the idea is to make us network and meet ourselves, those of our counterparts yes. who are doing these things abroad, to know the other ones doing it in Africa, and there we can share ideas and thoughts on how to move Africa forward. Yeah. My view and its group that uh, were nominated yes. for this, did the United Nations say? particular episode or any particular thing that uh, you know interested them that uh, pick you up the ladies have been on this for five years we have yeah. together and we've grown the show to be such an influential tool yeah. for nigerians and women across board so we are privileged and honored to be recognized mm -hmm. by my part to see that to see the work we've been doing for the past five years i was so excited because there are actually seven of us by yeni and nicola Kukuti amongst us and two of the mariam and obi are not here but we're all part of the same family mm -hmm. and We've done so much work to put the show where it is, and we're thankful that people feel we're quite influential. But you know what? Each time we talk about uh, being influential, we think of those playing politics. Here you are not playing politics. Uh, do, do you think that African women are really influential outside of politics? Do you want to answer that? Yes. Um, you are. This is not just about <laughs> being a politician. We're influential in the realm of media. Right. Yes. 
and we must highlight that so in just being journalists and presenters representing nigerian women and what we go through mm. on a daily basis for five years we have become the voice of the nigerian woman mm -hmm. to the extent that we're now globally recognized exactly. so yes we are influential <laughs> we okay. determine what governments say concerning <laughs> women all right so i guess you have come of age you will not be talking about men marginalizing women again from this but time. that's an important conversation in yes. fact it is part of the Millennial Sustainable Goals, mm -hmm. MMSDG um, for 2018 yes. and thereafter. Gender equality. Exactly. So we're not the ones saying it's that. The UN. Yeah, hey, the UN is saying that women all over the world are not yet equal to men and we need to address the issues. And we do plan okay. to support my part on that project of mm. gender equality. Yeah. Madam, let's leave it there. Many <laughs> thanks for coming on this show. Thank you for having us. Ah, it's been a proper edition today. You know, I've had. All these beautiful ladies that you've always seen on your television doing my view right here at the oh, stock exchange, closing the bell along with their colleagues. And they are up there on the 20th floor. So I had to bring them here <laughs> to talk to you here. Back to you, Tulu. Epiok, thank you very much, very much for bringing us up to speed. And say me hi to Morayo and all their colleagues there. That um, I think there's going to be an episode of your view direct from the Nigerian Stock Exchange so that we know how trading also. Maybe we could have Oscar Oyema on the hot seats with them. Thank you very much. Well, it's so, it's not too good. The market closed on a negative flank, 0.68%. Talking about the all share index, you know, the up and down anxiety as we move to the political, well, uh, season and all of that is affecting a lot of spending, a lot of sell off for cash. Well, let's say I plays up and would always be bringing you up to speed with trading activities live from the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange and also from our studios here talking about business uh, activities all across. But before we go, let's tell you that illegally imported goods worth 94 million naira have been confiscated by the Nigerian Customs Service. That's the Federal Operations Unit Zone B. Controller of that unit made the disclosure while presenting the goods before newsmen in Kaduna. Tese Makende has the story. It's a new leadership at the Federal Operations Unit, Zone B of the Nigerian Customs Service, headquartered in Kaduna. Sarakun Kebit Mustafa assumed leadership here only two weeks ago. He has since then hit the ground running, and these contrabands are a result of the hard work. The ones we have uh, sieved here, it, they have a combined duty paid value of 94 million naira. The Dangote truck we apprehended about uh, 267 bags of rice was apprehended along uh, Fontua's area road. Sarkin Kebi says the Federal Operations Unit, Zone B, under his watch, will not relent in dealing with those he describes as saboteurs of Nigeria's economy. You can see our two brand new Hilux uh, vehicles with a duty paid value of about 35 million naira. Then we also seized uh, about uh, 860 bags of uh, 50 kg foreign per boil rice in various vehicles. The seized items include, among others, bags of rice and palm oil, valued at 94 million naira. As usual, a note of warning was sent to those involved in smuggling. Sarkin Kirby tells them to do this from the practice, noting that the Nigerian Customs remains committed to tackling the act. Test McKendi, TVC News, Kaduna. Well, finally, crude oil prices are relatively steady at the global market on Friday as Japan gives up on securing a sanction waiver for Iran's oil. Well, at the London market, the European Brent trades at $77 per barrel. The OPEC basket crude steadies at $74 per barrel. Well, with that is a wrap on this, well, for the week. That's a close for the week. We'll see you again on Monday, God willing, same time. And of course, as usual, take you around the world of business. I'm Tulu Lokwe Enjoy your weekend.